Hello, this is Barry Gorell. I'm going to do a little demonstration today of um, setting black and white points uh, on an image that uh, will be done in a uh, curve adjustment uh, layer. And uh, it, usually this technique is used on images that are a little bit washed out, might have some color cast issues, uh, a little bit overexposed or underexposed. Um, just generally uh, an image that is kind of low in contrast and low in color, color saturation. Um, all of these things can be improved with uh, a careful setting of the black point and the white point. So let me get started on showing you how to do that. Um, first thing we're going to do is go here and, and uh, create a curve adjustment layer. And uh, first thing we want to do when we do that is up here in the little fly menu in the upper right corner. I'm going to go down here and make sure that there is a check here by the showing uh, show clipping for black and white points. Uh, if there's a check there, then you just want to move away from it and let go. If there's not, you want to leave this highlighted when you let go so that it will set that uh, checkpoint there. But since it's there, we'll, we'll go away from it and not uh, deal with it uh, that way. Um, you can set a black point uh, in the composite RGB channel, uh, all three channels together. Uh, sometimes if the black point is not neutralized, however, that, that'll uh, make it more difficult to, uh, to correct color casts and things like that. But if, if you're in a hurry, you can just simply grab, you'll notice the screen turns white. And as you slide this black point slider to the right, um, the uh, black points in the various channels will start to show up. Now the, the cyan ones are in the red channel, the yellow ones are in the blue channel. Uh, the areas that are black are coinciding with all three channels. So the fact that we have these multiple colors uh, tell us right away that we don't have a neutral black point. Um, but uh, just for the sake of demonstration real quick, you can see that just, just doing that alone can and sometimes make the image have a little more pop to it. But we're going to go back and work in each channel individually. Uh, and we'll also utilize the layer uh, adjustment layer up here to, to help us out uh, with, with uh, the color cast correction as well. So uh, we'll start off, we'll go to the red channel. Uh, as soon as we do, you notice the histogram turns red. Uh, this is a representation of all the pixels uh, in the red channel. Uh, the higher uh, levels up here mean a higher pixel count so that the, uh, there's a lot of white area up here, lighter tones down here in the roadway as well, and that these are represented in this high, high pixel count area here. But anyway, to set the black point, we're going to check, click on this black point slider. As soon as we do, the screen turns red. We're going to move to the right. Uh, if you do it really extremely, you'll see a lot of elements coming in there. All of the black areas here would be clipped out to black. Um, that's way too much black in an image. We want just a tiny little bit. Uh, so we're going to back off, back off, back off until we get to just a, just a, just a kind of a granular area. Uh, I, I refer to it as kind of a salt and peppery kind of a thing, but just uh, just a small amount that we, that we see here like that is usually sufficient. Um, while we're here, we'll, we'll, we'll click on the white point slider, which is up here. As soon as we click on it, the image turns black. And as we move left, you'll see areas in the image that will start to break out into the color of the channel that we're in, in this case, red. And that means that those areas would have no detail in them at all if we clipped it this hard. Um, and since this is a uh, picture uh, area stuff. We don't want to uh, clip that out to white. So we're going to back this off until all of that disappears, but we want to make it as light as we can. So we're going we're to make it a little small adjustment here. Um, just make a note that originally it was 255. We've now slid this slider down to 247 so that those tones have gotten a little bit lighter and have increased the uh, contrast. We'll move on to each channel and do the same thing. Uh, we're in the green channel now. We'll move up here. We'll get a little bit of black coming in. Um, and then on the white end of it, we'll come up here to the white point. We'll come in until it starts to break in. We'll back off until it just disappears, all these little dots. It's okay to leave one or two little dots, but basically you want to have um, a, uh, a, black, a black screen there that's just, just where everything's disappeared. On to the blue channel, uh, same thing. We're going to come in um, until we get just a little bit of black showing here. Um, and then in the blue area, we don't want to come in too much here, but you'll see that it breaks once we slide in here and a big area starts breaking. So we're going to back off, back off, back off until that disappears. Um, and now we've got an image that is uh, been balanced in all three channels. Uh, the black point's pretty neutral. You can click this on and off and you can see that the, uh, the, the improvement is not as dramatic as it was in the first one. But the nice thing about this is that we now have a neutral black point and a neutral white point. Um, 
So we're going to leave this on. Uh, the biggest area in this image is the green cast issues. Uh, you see here in the roadway, uh, let me get the right point here. In the roadway here, you'll see that there is a um, definite green cast in there. So we want to try to deal with that. Even over here on this side of the roadway, uh, it's not quite as apparent, but there's a little bit of a green, green there as well. So to fix this, we're going to go to the green channel. Um, and I just want to make a note here, this, this little gray line that's running up here, that's the original gamma curve of the, of the channel. Defaults from corner to corner, this being black down here, you can see by the, the, the indicators on the side here. This is the black uh, corner down here, this is the white corner up here. Um, and this curve runs directly from the black to the white in a very straight linear fashion. When we did our correction, you'll notice that we brought the black point in and the white point in to the left, which has made this, this line steeper and it's fallen below the other one. Uh, the fact that it's fallen below the line means that we've picked up a little magenta. Uh, the fact that it's steeper means that there's more contrast. Uh, and that's the case in each one of these channels. But let's, let's work on this green cast a little bit. I'm going to uh, click on this tool here, which is a, sets a control point um, on, the, on the curve here. So I'm going to come over here and look for an area where we have a pretty significant amount of green, uh, probably in this area somewhere. Um, and then we're going to force that area down. I'm going to put this control thing right over top of this so you can see. I'm going to hit my down arrow key on my keyboard and move this down. And as it moves down, if you look at the picture, you'll see that the green is disappearing and taking on a little bit more of a magenta cast. And that's kind of what we want. In the roadway here, uh, we've lost the green here. We've lost a lot of the green over here. So everything is, is looking pretty good. Um, the only thing that that's done is it's created some pinkish tones up here in the sky. Um, and normally, you could set a control point up here and force the, uh, that, that area right in here, force that area back up, and add green back in there, and that would take care of that. The problem in this image is that if we come down here on this roadway, we're going to find that that valuation uh, is, is about the same uh, level here and up here. You see that uh, point, as I move this back and forth, is about in the same area. So rather than fix that by setting another control point and moving this up and down, which uh, that will wreck what's happened with the road, we're going to take advantage of our layer mask here to hide the effect of the, of the, the green reduction uh, and increase in magenta in the cloud areas. So to do that, we're just going to make sure that the brackets are around our layer mask area. We want to have black in our foreground color. We're going to come up here and pick a paintbrush. Uh, we want the paintbrush to be... Uh, have a hardness of zero, right there, zero percent, uh, so that it's a nice soft brush, and one in normal mode. Let me turn this off here. And the opacity, generally, if you start around 35 percent or so, that'll give you a good starting point. If I hit my right bracket key, that'll control the size of the brush. We can also change it, go up here and select and change the brush size. But if you use the bracket left and right keys, it'll right bracket is makes the brush bigger, left bracket makes it smaller. And now if I paint in this sky area with black, um, you'll notice that the um, pink in the sky is getting less. Um, so I'm just going to run a roughly, roughly do this real quickly. Um, I'm going to make my brush smaller, and I'm going to go after some of the areas that are a little bit more stubborn, where there's still a little bit of pink showing. Um, and we'll go after that. There's a little bit up here in this corner. We can hit it a few times, and that'll take take some of that pink out. So we've got a neutral, nice neutral sky again. We've still got our green uh, removal down here. We've added the magenta down in here. All that's fine. So we're kind of kind of balanced out pretty nicely um, as working in individual channels. So now we're going to go back to the composite channel. We'll finish up by again setting a um, anchor control point set tool, and I'm going to click here on this light area of the superstructure. I'm going to click and set a control point up here, and that's not because I want to lighten it or darken it. It's because I just want to lock it down so that it doesn't change. Um, then I'm going to come down here in this shadow area of the superstructure, and I'm going to click here, and you'll notice that it's, it's going to fall down in this area over here. I'm going to click and set a control point there. I'll put my indicator right above it so you can see what's going to happen. And I'm going to use the down arrow key on my keyboard 
to force that um, that range of tones down, values down, so that they get darker. As I move this down, you can see the image is picking up saturation and contrast um, as, as I go down here. Uh, it's, it's a question of how much you, you really want to do, but uh, you kind of have to eyeball if, you, if your monitor or your display is calibrated pretty well. It should, should be pretty reliable. The only thing I'll say here that we additionally want to correct is we've got a lot of dark stain over here, and this roadway on this side is very, very light, and it kind of lends an imbalance to the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here while I'm in this, uh, and I'm going to set a control point um, down in the really low area, right down here. It's quite a distance from this, but it will allow us to uh, lighten this area up so that we can balance out this roadway a little bit. So again, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put this, actually, I'm going to put this right below it here. And then I'm going to hit my up arrow key, and I'm going to force this back up to the original uh, gray line um, so that that area becomes pretty close in value to what it was originally. And that's kind of balanced out the, the roadway pretty nicely. Um, and so we're, we're pretty much balanced out here. Um, the only thing I'll say is that this doing that process has introduced just a little bit of hint of the pink in the sky again. It's not really objectionable, but if it really bothers you, you can activate your brush tool again and uh, just go back in, make sure you're still in your um, layer mask over here. And you can paint just a little bit area, some, hit some of those areas where the, um, the pink is, and that will kind of clean those up so that they, that, that pinkishness is not, not really an issue. Um, every time you go over it, it adds a little bit more opacity to that layer. And um, so those, that, that pink stuff can be, can be dealt with in this, this way. Um, looks like there's a little bit down through here. You can play with this for a little while. But, but generally, we've got a pretty, pretty clean image now in the sky. Um, and the last, last thing we want to do is uh, we can label this, uh, these curves. If you lose track of them, you've got a whole bunch of them sometimes. We're going to just label this black and white point like that. And that kind of tells us what, what that curve is doing. And you can see there's quite a bit of difference here. The last step that I'll do is uh, we'll add some sharpening by duplicating the background. And I'm going to change it from background copy to USM for unsharp mask. Um, make sure that it's selected. I'm going to go up here to filter, sharpen, and I'm going down here to unsharp mask. And typically, an amount that I choose for an image, this is a 72 DPI image. Uh, and for general use, I usually use an amount somewhere between 120 and 200, um, depending upon the image. Sometimes I'll even go in and, and sharpen each channel individually, especially in portraits. Uh, if there's a lot of skin blemishes and things like that, you want to you can sharpen the red channel more than the other channels. Um, but uh, for an image like this, general nature, we're going to start with a 180 amount. The radius for a 72 DPI image, uh, I often use either 0.3 or 0.4. And then the threshold, um, I keep a fairly no, low number here if I want to get a lot of sharpness throughout. Uh, you can go with zero, but that sometimes gets uh, overly edgy looking. So two is a, is a good safe number uh, to go with there. Click OK. Uh, like this image pretty good. I'm just going to go up here and file save. And that will conclude our lesson for today. And uh, I'll catch you next time.